And good evening everybody, we are live, 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 the V2A Freak Show, all the way from the V2A Bunker. Are you ready? Okay, we have our special guest, the feral kid, Emil Minty, Captain Mayhem from the Order of the V8, Steve Schultz from the Silverton Collective. It is Ryan Brown. He's done artwork for 2008D, Marvel, DC, Dark Horse. I could have kept that going for an hour. <laughs> Mark Cordery, the best post-apocalyptic builder in the world. What time is it in Sydney this morning? It is seven minutes past six. She happens and everyone dies. Do that. He moved country and opened a museum. It's AD from the Mad Max 2 Museum. Yeah. <laughs> See you all on Saturday night. Okay, guys. It's Saturday night. It's the Wastelands. Welcome to Freak Show. We are live. And tonight yeah. on Freak Show number nine, we have Mechanized. Whoop, hello. We have all the way from sunny Manchester. We have Skellywig. I go boom, boom, boom. Let me hear you say whale. <laughs> okay. Uh, we're from down south. He's a, he's just a cowboy from down Devon. It's Stig. Devon, my ass. <laughs> hello, brethren. Okay. And ladies and gentlemen, he's a reasonable man. He just wants a gasoline. He's the Ayatollah of rock and roller. It is the Lord Humongous Tank. Greetings from the armpit of America, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> New Jersey. New Jer Hello, New Jersey. <laughs> My dogs. <laughs> My cat. Is that your cat of war, by the by any chance? <laughs> uh, this is Stephen, the cat. Oh no, no, she doesn't like that. <laughs> that uh, uh, oh, uh, she's gonna uh, sit next to me. I am. Wait, wait, where's Lady Commander? She's supposed to be sitting next hey. to me. You want me to? Yes. yes. Okay. Steven, you're out. Come here. Oh. So, I'm so glad to be here. Thank you guys for having us. Hello, and welcome to the Freak Show. Hello, Lady Humongous. Hey, hello, Mrs. Humongous. <laughs> this, is, this is our quarantine. Look at us. I'm quarantined. She's allowed to have a party. <laughs> it's, I, I, like, I like the way that you're all sort of gloved up and uh, rubberized. It's, it's a great look. Always... To keep her. Be safe. Be safe is always a, always a key. So first of all, welcome to everybody online as well, guys. Say a big witness to everybody online. Please say who you are, where you are, where you're from, what uh, tribes you're on or with. Uh, we can see the chat. The chat is live. So please post away. So first of all, uh, the, the great Lord Humongous. Uh, how did you get into uh, Wasteland Weekend? What was your first one, and how did you find out about it originally? Uh, I found out about the uh, the original Road Warrior Weekend right after it happened. A friend of mine brought it to my attention and said, Hey, I know you're a big Mad Max fan. This is about to be right up your alley. And uh, so I planned for like a year to attend the next one, which became Wasteland Weekend 1 in 2010. Wow. Uh, I went out as a uh, an MFP officer. There was like... I don't know, 300 of us there. It was a pretty small uh, pretty small deal back then. And uh, I loved it, though. I fell in love with it immediately. Uh, I felt like I was finally at home with people that felt like family, uh, people that understood my obsession with this whole post-apocalyptic bullshit, well, reality now. Um, <laughs> and a, a, a buddy of mine that I was camping with that said, you know what, man? Next year, you should come back as the Lord Humongous. And I said, oh, get out of here. That's that's crazy talk. And he said, no, no, you're the only guy here that can pull it off. And, uh, well, it took me a year to do it, but I got into shape. I got the costume together. I came back in 2011 and uh, unleashed the Humongous on the world. It was... Uh, it was pretty fucking amazing, I must say. <laughs> well, also, you are you are one of the main features. For people who have, who've never been to Wasteland Weekend, uh, oh, you man. are one of the main features of the whole <laughs> show. It is just awesome. 
uh, your DJ sets. We'll get on to the DJ sets in a moment. But uh, the first year we were there, me and Pat, we were that excited, like uh, like small schoolgirl fans, to meet the Lord Humongous. <laughs> we were like, it's Humongous. So can we were like, can we have a selfie, please? Can we have a selfie? And uh, there's you, purely in character, uh, rocking oh. the look. Uh, and then at that moment, the ice cream van went past. You know the the beaten up wasteland ice cream. So so our first yep. meeting with you was meeting the Lord Humongous, and he ran off going ice cream, ice cream. You did get an ice cream. You did. You had a mini milk. Very refreshing. I think you had a mini milk ice cream. Yeah, we were very jealous on that. That's what you did with the mini milk afterwards. That was a little disturbing. And the fun bit is, is when you when you come back to the UK and you try and explain what wasteland weekend was like, it's hard to put into words. Oh, yeah. So, so, where, so whereabouts in America are you from? Well, I, I grew up uh, just outside of Washington, D.C. in uh, northern Virginia. Uh, I got a job with a, a little-known band called the Misfits back in the mid-90s. Oh, so oh, I moved God. up here oh, no. to, uh, to New Jersey. I, I live in Vernon, New Jersey, which is where the Misfits hail from. Uh, I worked with those guys for, uh, God, 13, 13 years. years? Yeah, 13 years. Uh, bought a house up here. So we are in the woods, in the on top of a mountain. It's just us and the bears and the wild turkeys and the deer and and uh, it's well, Stephen the cat. Literally the best place to be quarantined. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. definitely. When when you say you did a little job, you were the tour manager, weren't you? Well, I started out as the merch guy. If you wanted a t-shirt, <laughs> see me. Best it's place to start. Place. Best place to start. Yeah, I worked my way up through uh, guitar tech, drum tech, assistant tour manager tour manager uh then i started building the stage show for the guys making the props running the smoke and the lights and the mirrors and all that kind of shit i was like the uh, wizard of oz behind the curtain pulling all the the the, the guitar tech and the drum tech they're not sort of in a pile behind the house yeah i was i was i was was thinking (laughs) that was your promotions always because somebody mysteriously disappeared or blew up (laughs) Junk over in our attic, okay? Oh, God, yeah. Yeah, that's gorgeous. Crazy. I've got so much junk over there. So, um... But I, I, and bodies. And, and, and bodies, yeah. I started out as a, as a big Misfits fan. I was a collector. I was known around the world for my Misfits collection. Uh, eventually, I, I got to a point where I had to, had to sell the collection because I needed uh, this thing called a house. I had to put a roof over my head. Down, yeah. so luckily, I, I turned the, uh, the record collection into a home. It worked out pretty well for me. Uh, but I, I had weird shit. I had, like, the drummer's shoes, you know. I mean, stuff. <laughs> Did he know? Uh, uh, no. <laughs> I think Robo knew. Robo knew, yeah. Um, but, yeah, it was uh, it was interesting. Most of the collection went to a guy in uh, Spain. A um, couple of choice pieces went around to other people, other collectors around the world. But I had one record alone that sold for $10,000. It was oh uh, wow. one of mine, actually. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. So. Teenagers from all uh, attitudes. So, so, so for the for the first wasteland weekend, I take it you sort of uh, you flew over to LA. Was it around in the sort of same area where yep. the original wasteland was? Yeah, yeah. I mean, we used to go to a place called H Park, which was not too far away from where wasteland is now. The first year it was Road Warrior weekend in two thousand nine. I think it was like a dry lake bed, something or another, uh, somewhere else. Uh, but yeah, H Park was where it was for a good. Was yeah. it six years, maybe. Yeah. Like yeah. Exactly yeah. six. Yeah. So, so uh, on your second year, when you went as Lord Humongous, was there just you, or did you start um, getting together the Dogs of War? Because uh, uh, Lord Humongous and the Dogs of War at Wasteland, with all the all the vehicles, etc., is just stunning. So, how ha- ha- how did that come together? Uh, uh, year one, two thousand eleven. It was just the Lord Humongous. Uh, year two in 2012, I think I had uh, a toady and a smegma. Uh, year three, I probably <laughs> still had a toady and a smegma. Yeah. <laughs> I've been about the women of it. Uh, it wasn't until uh, I think 14 was the first year we did a gate crash and we brought the humongous machine out and a couple other vehicles. Uh, got a few guys together. So the dogs of war slowly built up over the years to where we are now with uh, what do we have total? Like 30? Dogs of War? It's dogs quite a big, yeah. yeah. 30 yeah. Dogs of War. How many, Ooh. we were supposed to have a count on like how many vehicles, how many motorcycles we have. And everything's screen accurate. Including buggies and motorcycles, isn't it? It's like between 9 and 12. Something like that. Yeah. Can't keep track. It's screen accurate. These uh, dogs right. are taking over. I must admit, yeah. it is truly, and it, it, it's stunning to see, because our first Wasteland weekend, 
uh, when we come out of our RV and it was uh, I think mid morning or lunchtime, and then we had the whole uh, Dogs of War drive past. And <laughs> it's so surreal, especially from if you're from England. It's like, uh, first of all, you're in the desert. It's bloody yeah. hot. And you've just had the do- Lord Humongous and the yeah. Dogs of War drive past your RV. It's, uh, it's, th- there's nowhere else like it, is it? It's absolutely bizarre. Uh, it's, it, and, and being in the Dogs of War, and I, I, I'm sure I speak for all of them, it's, it's like living the movie. It's, it's really, uh, in, it's insane. Uh, the, the, uh, <laughs> the level of, of uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, screen accuracy that I demand out of my dogs. It's a, uh, it's a little crazy. I, I admit. I know. I keep, I keep blocking you over here. No, I was air quoting you. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, but that's 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 what the dogs are. I mean, we we want we want the attendees of Wasteland or wherever we go to feel like they just stepped onto the uh, the set of uh, Mad Max yeah. Two: The Road Warrior. Yeah. It's. Absolutely, it's so true. Absolutely it is stunning. <laughs> so, apart from as well, as well as sort of Wasteland Weekend, do you do any other festivals with the dogs? Uh, the other big one is the uh, Silverton Collective in Australia. That's every two years. It'll be coming up uh, this this March, which will be the 40th anniversary of Mad Max Two. Definitely. I'll see you guys Are there. you coming on stage with uh, us like you always do, sir? <laughs> I love <laughs> trying to stop him. <laughs> Try and stop him. Yeah. <laughs> coming through. Yeah. We, 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 we were so impressed with you. We wrote that Lord song for you. Uh, and uh, we've played Wasteland now four years running. Not this year, but four years before. And every yeah. single one, you've been on stage with us. And it's been an absolute blast. Yeah, uh, you've you've uh, got so so much stage presence. Uh, and you, you really just fire up the orders. It's, and also, because we now seem to play on a Friday, you, you've got your Friday, was it Smart Casual? <laughs> Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Former Friday. Friday. Uh, former Friday. Well, can you, ex- yeah. can yeah. you explain? That. Could explain to the I audience what myself. Formal Friday, your Lord Humongous Formal Friday out, uh, outfit looks like? Picture uh, Lord Humongous as Mr. <laughs> Peanut. That's what, what, what it comes down to. Uh, I think the only main thing I'm missing is spats, but I've, I've got the top hat, I've got the uh, the cane, the uh, the sleeveless tuxedo jacket with the monocle. Uh, the the, uh, the white bow tie, the uh, white gloves. Uh, it's very dapper. You tell me your dedication, though. Your what's the top of your cane? Oh, the top of my cane is the uh, the bulldog from the uh, the the Mack truck hood ornament. <laughs> oh, oh, it is oh. absolutely stunning. And also, how long have you been DJing? Because your DJ sets are stunning, mate. You are one of the... yeah the, the battles. You you play the battles, don't you, on various nights? Yes, yes. Well, the whole DJ humongous thing started as a joke <laughs> honestly uh, but jared butler one of the event organizers is a, a good friend of mine we do a, an event called dragon con in atlanta every uh every year uh, it's a big uh, cosplay convention and we were in the room i don't know putting some kind of costume on or taking a costume off who knows what we were doing and uh i just kind of turned to him and said you know wouldn't it be funny if just for like an hour dj humongous kind of took over the pit and and spun some <laughs> And, you know, just had, had fun with it. And Jared's like, that's a great idea. I think we're going to do that. So I think it was 2015? Yes. Maybe? Yes. Um, yeah, I went to the pit. Uh, DJ LSD taught me how to spin, like, you know, an hour before <laughs> I went on. I'd never DJ before my life. I didn't know what the hell I was doing. Uh, I just had, like, a, a set of songs that I, I would want to dance yeah. to if I was out in the pit. And I put it on, and, uh, and the crowd was, like, really fucking into it. It was, it was a great reaction. So uh, Jared was like, fuck, we're going to do this on the main <laughs> stage next year. And uh, it just took off. So we do the uh, the DJ Humongous uh, kickoff set every, uh, what is it, Thursday yeah. night now at sundown. Or Wednesday. When, when, when does no, Wednesday. 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 God, Wednesday. God, I remember. that one year, it was too W word. The, 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 the W word, be the word we don't mention. Yes. The Voldemort of Wasteland. <laughs> uh, <laughs> we, 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 we do the 45-minute uh, to an hour set kickoff there. And then as you said, uh the, uh, the battle every year. That was an idea I had to do a DJ battle between myself and other uh, well-known DJs of the Wasteland. It started with uh, a battle royale of Humongous versus uh, Liquid yep. Sex Drive and uh, Death Infection. So it was the three of us going at it. 
and the shenanigans that, that broke loose on the stage were just <laughs> epic. There's <laughs> a lot of backbiting going on there. A lot of ill feeling. But we were asked a question, Lady Humongous. The audience would like to know what you are drinking in this post-apocalypse. Well, I don't know if I'm going to get a kickback for this, but they should definitely send me some free beer. Uh, Dogfish Head 90-minute IPA. We actually asked for 60-minute, but we got 90 minutes. That's okay. <laughs> The liquor stores around here, they're essential, so they stay open, but you can't go in. You have to pull up, call, place your order. Yeah, they, and then they bring it out to you. You know, everybody's everybody's just really great, and I'm sure all over, but in our town especially. But no, I don't have enough to survive the apocalypse, so please <laughs> we, send more. We, we do need sponsorship by some sort of brewery, don't we, really? I think that's our next, the next ploy. Yep. <laughs> in our country. And then there's another question for you, Humongous. Um, did you ever imagine laying siege to a toilet paper factory instead of an oil rig? <laughs> I'm <crazy. laughs> I thought we'd be hoarding food or fuel or water or gas or something, but toilet paper, who thought that, that was just... God. <laughs> Humanity really tipped their hand. Like now, that when the real, real apocalypse comes, we know it's toilet, toilet people. Yeah, we have toilet to paper and gloves. Yeah, I'm ready. Let's, let's, let's start bunker. I, I have a question here from uh, Mr. Minty. ML Minty. Yeah. Ooh. Oh, oh my God. Oh, oh yeah. Da, da, da. Oh, oh. So, oh. The, the spoils of war. The DJ belt. Yeah, that's what it is. That's the heavyweight DJ champion oh, of the wasteland so belt right there. The battles so we love. Who did you beat last oh, year? Fantastic. Since we go, yeah, so, we never so, missed so one. So who were you fighting uh -huh. last year then? Uh, last year uh, I was supposed to be a rematch between myself and uh, <laughs> Mini Rictus. Oh, yes. Right, he wasn't there, was he? Yeah, he, he yeah. couldn't make way. Couldn't make it. Like that. He wasn't happy the year before, was he, when he lost? You did he was him, not man. a happy Mini Rictus. He gave one hell of a fight, though, i got to tell you. That it was, was, it really was. was totally. <laughs> so, yeah. a quick question yeah. from Mr. Minty, Emil Minty. He, Mr. Minty. Hey, he, he asks a question you. every week. The guy is yeah. an absolute star. So, uh, a question. Uh, what is the highlight, of, well, your most memorable moment uh, in cosplay, and what character was it? Was it Lord Humongous or another character that you've played? So, what was your high point? Wow. So, so far. So far yes. <laughs> Ooh. Meeting Lady Faye here, yeah. Um, well, I, I must admit, the first time that I met Shell Nilsson, yeah. the actor who played the original Lord Humongous, uh, when I was dressed as Humongous, we, we met at the convention here in uh, New York. I was extremely nervous. Uh, <laughs> I didn't know what to expect as far as how he was going to react to my character. It was adorable. <laughs> it was adorable. Oh, brilliant. Yeah. We actually met earlier that morning, but I was in street clothes. and I'd just come out of the gym, so I had my pump on. We, he saw me. We got to talking about working out and stuff. And I knew who he was, but I, I don't think he realized who I was until yeah. later, uh, later on. <laughs> but that was, um, that was probably my most nerve-wracking moment of being in cosplay and, and meeting you know, a, a celebrity, somebody that I impersonate. Uh, I mean, I've, I've met Dolph Lundgren. I met uh, Rutger Hauer. May he rest right. in peace. Um, I met Voldemort. We met, uh, God, who else? No, honey, uh, Lucius Malfoy. Lucius Malfoy. No, not Voldemort. What am I talking about? <laughs> Lucius Malfoy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's, that's one of my shticks is that I dress up in the, as these characters and I go meet the actors who portrayed them originally and get pictures with them and, and uh, can, you know, goof around and take selfies. But Dolph Lundgren's like reaching for his phone. We're taking selfies together. Yeah, that was cool when, when Dolph Lundgren asked his assistant to grab his phone. Yeah. And he was taking pictures of pictures on my phone with his phone. It was like he was really, oh really my. excited. <laughs> What's your favorite character? What's your favorite? Well, one of the coolest reactions I got was there's a, a famous uh, 80s wrestler called uh, Mr. Wonderful Paul Orndorff. And I, I cosplayed him. And I went to meet him at a, some little wrestling convention in Pennsylvania years ago. I come walking in the room, wearing his outfit, got the crazy wig on to look just like him. And he's signing an autograph. And he looks up and he sees me coming. He puts the pen down. He stands up and starts doing a golf clap and goes, that is the coolest fucking thing I have ever seen. I'm coming over to get his autograph. And he says, hey, can I get some pictures with you? <laughs> Oh my god! Well, I, I heard also some amazing things from Ad. We had um, Ad from the Mad Max Museum on last week, and he's and he and he. Well, first of all, they send their love, Ad and, and uh, Linda. Uh, uh, 
He also like said that people in Silverton actually thought you were the real humongous because you, because it, your, your costume <laughs> and your attitude is so spot on. You totally confused everybody, and they thought you were. Do you know how many people walk. come up to him and say, "Oh, you look really good for your age"? Like, <laughs> <laughs> how did you trade well, that? Could go either way, really. So I've had to watch him burst so many people's bubbles at conventions. Like, Lordy Mungus, like you look amazing. You look just like you did in the movie. And he's like, "Well, thank you, but <laughs> I wasn't in the movie." <laughs> yeah. You know, speaking of, of uh, selfies and stuff, the first picture Adrian and I ever took together, uh, we're we're in his car out by the Pinnacles. I think we're going to the Pinnacles. Yeah. He, he was driving me out there, and he put his phone up for us to take a selfie together. And I, I, I saw the picture later. He looked like a, a, a giddy <laughs> schoolboy. It was <laughs> a smile on his face. He was so happy to be to be meeting me. And I'm like, I'm smiling behind the mask. You can't even see him. I'm like, oh my god, this is fucking Adrian Bell. It's great. Their museum so, is amazing. Oh, isn't what it? what it's, Adrian and his family did yeah, is just, they are, just out of this awesome world. And so, Absolutely right. awesome. And also, yeah. um, there is a. Yeah. Um, there is going to be a, seek, a special T-shirt featuring V2 and yourself, sir, which is going to be released. Yes. Uh, we're, we're going to get everybody on, uh, us, you, and we're going to get AD on, and we're going to release it, and it's only going to be available at the Mad Max Museum over in Australia. So it's a big thank you to these guys just for being absolutely awesome. So thank you. Thank you very much for that, for your participation in the T-shirt. It's, it's stunning. Now we have another question just come in oh. from Roden no last name. Sorry. <laughs> hey, hey. I always get that wrong. I <laughs> so how many weddings have you officiated now? Oh uh, gosh. Uh, <sighs> Almost ten. We have <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're there, yeah. I'll, I'm gonna run out of fingers. The, the most important was I, I actually officiated the uh, wedding of my mother. Oh, that was, oh wow! That was, oh, that, was, that was the only wedding I did not as humongous. Uh, she asked me. She said, I, "I want you to do it as Jim," and I said, "I don't know who that guy is." <laughs> that character. Uh, she actually let me wear a, a suit of armor, so I could I could do it as a knight. That was. Oh, wow. but, oh. Yeah. last night's night. Night. So yeah, that worked. But uh, yeah, wasteland weekend weddings. Uh, I, I think I'm around seven. I, I'm. I, I'd have to really yeah, I would think say, about that I was one. I'd say you're over about six. Yeah, def yeah. definitely. Yeah. Yeah. There's always another. So how do you apply for that one then? Where do you uh, have to put the application in for the wedding? <laughs> Just <laughs> ask and supply with alcohol. <laughs> you know, you're probably not even remembering. You probably are closer to ten because. At Wasteland, people will just grab him sometimes. You know, we're going to get married today. Yeah. Can you do it? And he will drop. People, he will drop whatever he's doing to make sure he officiates that wedding that was in the middle of the day or do, when doing when we could have been doing something else. He wants to be there. He wants to do that. Yeah, so, that's amazing. It. Yeah, so, I was pretty well. So quick. Okay. <laughs> yeah, the first one we did was what twenty sixteen, oh maybe. Mm -hmm. And I, I got ordained just so I could do the wedding in Wasteland and uh, made the whole uh, speech up and everything. And it's, it's a lot of fun. It's a good time. Oh, no, wait. No, the what first... 15? No, oh, my God. 15. So, so in Wasteland, what is your favorite part of Wasteland? Sleeping. <laughs> Sleeping. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not kidding. Oh, my favorite part of Wasteland. Um, Jesus. Jesus. Um... God, there's, there's so much. I mean, how do you put your finger on on the, the best thing? I mean, uh, fucking open bar at the Atomic Cafe, that's, that's always yeah. been a good time. Yeah. Thunderdome is out of control. Uh, people keep asking me, like, oh, you mongus, you got to fight in the Thunderdome. I'm like, what are you kidding? I can't even turn my head. <laughs> yeah, like, exactly. How do I fight? Oh, yeah. well, you ever see me driving? I, I can't even see what I'm doing. Um, yeah, it gets messy. <laughs> <though. Hand signals laughs> with the gloves. <laughs> Sorry, is that your foot? Ow. Uh, for me, I, I guess the highlight is, is being with my dogs, uh, doing the humongous thing, d getting out in the caravan, getting out in the, uh, getting out of the actual uh, event, out yeah. into the open desert, doing some high speed chases, uh, filming stuff like that. Like we'll we'll get somebody with an interceptor and we'll get all the dogs just full on 60, 70 miles an hour down a desert road, just chasing after them, kicking up all kinds of dirt, banging on the sides, yelling, screaming. Uh, that's 
Oh my god. That's goodness. a rush. It's That's a real rush. rush. Yeah. So, so just a just a quick one about the Silverton um forty year anniversary next year. So um is there any so you're going over, is there any of the other dogs of war? Anybody else from Wasteland? Yeah, Steve Schultz, who's uh, pretty much the event organizer, is my Wes. Uh, he'll be there. Um, we've got uh, Scott and D, our uh, Dogs of War. Uh, they're planning on being there. And, and speaking of Scott and D, I'd, I'd be remiss if I didn't mention their uh, special event here on the East Coast of the U.S., uh, Apocalypse East. Uh, we're starting to hope we had the first one last August. We're hoping to do that again this August, COVID permitting. Um, but that's uh, kind of a, an homage right. to the Green Place uh, because it, it's held out in uh in a, in a in Pennsylvania wooded uh, you know grassy area, but we had a we had a lot of fun last year getting together, oh, you know, DJing amazing. some stuff. It was it was it was like a wasteland light. It was like wasteland casual. It was, oh, wow. uh, it, was yeah. it was cool. A lot less. Well, well, ho That's hopefully, sure. if it's on, um, we're going. But at the moment, it, we're all on full lockdown yeah. at the moment. So, uh, <laughs> yeah. so for next year though, so um, we've uh, talking to uh, Mr. Minty. He's going in his um, interceptor. He's been building an interceptor, uh, and yeah. I think he's bringing wow. over Bruce Spence with him. <laughs> Good. Uh, what, he, a what a gentleman! What a gentleman! We were just talking with him yeah. yeah. and he said that maybe Bruce was coming. Yeah. That's I'm so excited! Yeah, yeah. Bruce is so, so nice. Cool. He is so nice. Well, I should say hello to you from Mama Wasteland. And she says, well, I hope we will ever meet again and can hug you in person. <laughs> Mama Giddy, yeah. Mama Giddy. He's He's very I, have, I, have a, I have a question <laughs> from Melvin. Do you know Melvin from France? Yeah, yeah Melvin's hey, on. Melvin. Hello, Melvin. <laughs> um, so Melvin asked about your documentary. How's that going? Uh, hey. Hey, mind your own. <laughs> mind your own. <laughs> um, it took a break. Um, I just made an official announcement, um, I think like two weeks ago. Um, I premiered a part of the documentary I made about him uh, in Australia last February for the Silverton Collective. And it was just like a, like a rough cut work in progress, test screening kind of thing. And when I came home, I scrapped the whole thing and wanted to just start over and really tell the whole story. And within maybe three weeks of me coming home from Australia, uh, a really big opportunity knocked for me, and I started documenting the fight for 9-11 victims here. Uh, they've gosh. been fighting in Washington, D.C. for 15 oh, years gosh, for health care, uh, permanent funded health care, because obviously the government... Yeah. 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 So, um, long, 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 long story short, I immediately started going to Washington, D.C. and starting that documentary. It was just too good to pass up. Yeah. And when they finally got the health care permanently funded in July, it was a huge victory. Um my photos have been acquired by the, the National 9-11 Museum oh in Manhattan, God, and it's, it's just... Oh, it's superb. It's so oh, wow. Life. Very cool. Um, and That's these people, people just have... The Feel Good Foundation has changed my life and changed the lives of so many others. And they gave me a full-time job in Manhattan, uh, which I had been living... I, I lived in New York when I met Tank four years ago. Um, it's, it's the city that I love the most. It's the city I call home. So I moved back to Manhattan and started working full-time. And guess who didn't work on the documentary at all, all year long? <laughs> <laughs> the lady who moved to Manhattan. <laughs> <laughs> but with yeah. lockdown, um, I'm, still, I'm still working from home for the Feel Good Foundation and for uh, the law firm that helps everybody out with their with their compensation. Uh, but yeah, now that Melvin, now that uh, uh, yeah. I'm locked down in COVID, I actually have no excuse. I have awesome. nothing but time on my hands. So, New York. So in lockdown, like we are here in the UK, we are not allowed to go there. There's nothing, so it's the same for New York, right? Oh, oh yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Because of California, I think they all opened up again, or on the other side. Um, I think that they're they're pro people are protesting, which I just think is just insanely reckless, and that's just my own personal opinion on that. Like they're they're marching yeah. like this yeah, close yeah, yeah. With strangers to reopen yeah. the beaches. Um, New York, well, like you know, we live here together in, in the mountains, but. Manhattan, which I always just feel is my home, they've been really, really, really responsible That's and good. really cautious, and nobody's yeah. whining, nobody's complaining, everybody's yeah. doing their due diligence. New Yorkers don't complain, and that's what I really like about them. You look around the rest of the country, everybody's yeah. complaining, but not yeah. New York. And New York. <laughs> yeah, New York's like yeah, it's really <laughs> sad. I, I just can't understand how some people can't see that it's not just them. Right? They've got to look after themselves, and they've got to look after others, and it really pisses me off. 
when people wear, I'm not going to wear a mask because <laughs> yeah. I haven't got it. It's, yeah, but yeah, you might catch it or you might give it to somebody else and they'll give it to their parents or somebody they're looking after. I yeah. find it quite unbelievable. Sorry. Oh, well. No, but I, that's the C word. You don't want to mention our show. <laughs> didn't so, mention the C so, word. So, so hopefully the uh, documentary, the, uh, the tank documentary will be back on soon. Yeah, well, it will be. Now, for, for those that don't know, Tank and I met because I started filming a documentary about him. Um, no. I, I was a, I'm a journalist, a photojournalist, and he was at a convention on Long Island. And I went, it was media day. It was like two or three days before the event. And they had some cosplayers there to interview. And I, long story, it was a rough night the night before at work. I think I worked like a 20-hour shift. And then I had four hours of sleep and came back to Long Island. And I almost didn't go. I showed up like at the last possible minute to go do this story. And he was actually getting changed out of his costume. I actually saw him. Ch- <laughs> oh, he was hello. changing in front of the oh. Him. oh, oh, hello. And there's not a lot to change out of. <laughs> I was so, it was raining and I was so miserable. I'm like, huh, like out of the corner of my mind, I'm like, huh, naked guy, who cares? Like, he just kept going. I'm going to see you. Are you going to, are you going to film anything special next year for the 40th anniversary uh, the, uh, over in Australia? Because that's, that's, that's going to be huge, isn't it? Yeah. I go, it's, it's stupid not to bring gear, but I go with obviously the lightest amount of gear possible. My first trip to Australia, I was, was filming as a documentarian. And just the amount of gear I had to bring was just so expensive and just so cumbersome, yeah. but I needed it. But now when I go back, I always have some little, I always have a camera no matter what, yeah. but I always make sure I have some kind of recording device. Cause God forbid you miss something really, really magical. You could put it in the special features at this point for all I care, but you don't want to miss a thing. Yeah. But uh, have, have so, you seen yeah. Melvin's um, documentary, the archeologist? Yes. we. Have, I don't know if Melvin, I, if I we're allowed to say it at this point, he showed us like a special, like official uncut version of it at yeah. Adrian's house. Yeah. Cool. yeah. And Melvin, if you're still watching, it was gorgeous. I told you that Definitely. then. It was gorgeous. It was just so well done. The story is so great. You kept things like just perfectly digestible and simple and just astonishing. You, I, I can't stress enough how much everybody's going to enjoy archaeologists of the way. Yeah. Hopefully yeah. I think maybe next year or so, I think they've just got some uh, stuff they've got to work out first. Uh, before they can actually release it, but uh, hopefully, I can't wait for it to come out. I, we, we've watched it a few times now, and it's just absolutely awesome. So, we have yeah. a part of the show uh, where we actually have uh, we pick the world's crappiest toys, <laughs> and uh, so so the idea of this is called uh, bunker or bin, and um, the idea is is uh, you you're, you're running towards your bunker because it's a nuclear fallout. You see these two really shit toys. One of them you can grab and take into your bunker for all eternity, and the other one you can throw straight in the bin. Um, I think we sent it over on your phone earlier on. Um, so, yeah. so, so, um, <laughs> yeah. would you... sorry. No, I just read the comment. So, um, sorry. <laughs> so, what do you think? So, first of all, we have on the left-hand side we have donkey brains, which is. <laughs> <laughs> Opinions. What do you think? What's your initial? What's your thoughts? Well, donkey brain. Well, I've, I've eaten calf brain. That was actually pretty good, but I've never played with donkey brains. I, I thought that cat was looking yeah. a bit quiet. I, I, th- I think it's a um, a Toy Story ripoff by the look of it, but uh, I'm not sure where they got the words donkey brains yeah. from. Maybe intelligent donkey. I'm not sure. What? what uh, hmm. Donkey brains is a total insult. Here, if you call somebody donkey brains, that's an insult. Let me see. Is it? Let me see Bunker or Bin. <laughs> they they are pretty bad. Oh, there's the yeah. flushing frenzy where you have to try and flush <laughs> a plastic turd down the toilet. <laughs> <laughs> it's that's a... my personal favorite. Yeah, that one I love. That was, that's genius. Think this through, Tank. Do you really what? want to look at poop in the bunker? Like, I would rather play with donkey. We'll be looking at poop in the bunker anyway. <laughs> you, go you, get a, you get a free toilet with it as well. Ooh, oh, that's geez. true. That's there you true. Go. I yeah, don't think it's going to be full size, though. Is that, is that yeah. a pen size toilet? <laughs> so, I very much so doubt. initial thoughts <laughs> on donkey brains or, or flushing frenzy, what are you sort of gravitating towards? I, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a flusher. I'm definitely a flusher. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Oh, the secrets come out. 
<laughs> so, 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 you, so you're obviously not eating yeah. enough uh, fibre if it's uh, if it's still floating. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this this harkens me back to a uh, a sort of a road warrior rip off um, uh, Asian uh, to- cheap toy I found in a dollar store somewhere, and uh, it came with a whole bunch of warnings that were were roughly translated from China, <laughs> Mandarin or something, and it was. Uh, this toy has been manufactured for the extreme priority, the good looks. <laughs> Beware the small part that chokes the child. <laughs> so I'm all about the extreme priority, the good looks. That's, I'm, that's I'm, what I'm I liking thought. your style, sir. I'm liking your style. So, guys, if you want to vote online, uh, would you go for the br- uh, donkey brains or would you go for the flushing frenzy? So back to the Lord Humongous. What is your choice? And whichever one you say, I will try and hunt it down and get you one. <laughs> <laughs> and then I have to say flesh and frenzy because I, 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 I how that even works. I'm very curious. It piqued my curiosity. This is great. Keep me entertained for hours. Watch. Well, Melvin just said that uh, the screening will be released at Silverton oh next year. Yep. Yeah. yeah, we heard that. Oh, now I have a reason to go. Okay, good, good. <laughs> do, do you have any tips for uh, yeah. people who've not been to Silverton before? Yeah, as a matter yeah. of fact, I do. Yeah. I, <laughs> and she it drives, she hates it. But I, I have a hat <laughs> that I wear with a big brim and a net that goes over my whole head because the fucking flies <laughs> are absurd. You look like a fucking lunatic. <laughs> like... <laughs> Yeah, I always look like a fucking lunatic. So, look at me. Actually, sadly, the, the drought was so bad last year that there were no flies. So yeah. that wasn't a big deal. That was very sad. We had no flies. Yeah, that was horrible. Um, it would be... <laughs> it's sad because of the drought. Yes, yeah. I know. The drought was rough. It was It'd very rough. Dick. So, yeah, no, but... yeah, okay. So camping, just camping supplies, heat, heat, sun, and sleeping supplies. It gets freezing out there at night, scorching during the day. And you just have to be smart. Same yeah. as Wasteland. Just yeah. be smart. Yeah, I just want to say, I sound like Wasteland. <laughs> yeah, and wear like sun covering clothes, like light long sleeve shirts and things, and a hat, obviously. Just simple mom stuff. Yeah. <laughs> Why did you call me a mom the other day? Don't tell me I was acting like a mother, telling oh, somebody what to know. do. Anyway. And packing somebody. <laughs> so, so are you going just straight over there or are you going to uh, travel around australia or what's your plan funny we, we were just sitting at this table this morning drinking our coffee eating our uh, cereal and uh talking about that like what do we want to do this time because last time we spent like what a week in brisbane well we always spend about three weeks there and uh we always do we always start in Melbourne and then we always go up to Broken Hill and then we have like a week or week and a half to go wherever we want. So our first time we went to Sydney and then last year we went to Brisbane and the Gold Coast and we hung out with Shell. Um, yeah, ice cream. We, ice. I took, I took the Lord Humongous. Always, for ice cream. always. <laughs> you, want, you want to see the picture? The picture is classic. So uh, yeah, we're we're trying to figure out what we want to do for like our our extra week uh, while we're there. We'll uh, we'll come up with something, something uh, epic. Here we go. All right, so here's just yeah, you know, just to whet the appetite. I can't see. Okay, there we go. So there's the three of us at a Baskin Robbins on the Gold wow. Coast in Australia. Oh wow! Yeah, yeah, yeah. Here's what you really want to see, which is the two Lord Humongous. Hey! Yeah. Hey! 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 Look how happy we are. There's something about the humongous ice cream, isn't there? There's a sea going. It's always (laughs) ice cream. It is always. We're going to have to get a large humongous ice cream made. Have your own flavor or your own brand or something. Okay. Or a t shirt. So, a question now for me is In Wasteland, what is your most funniest moment you will never forget of all the years you've attended? What is a moment where you think, like, Jesus? Because we all have them, but. Funniest moment. Huh. That's a good question. That's a great question. Yeah, let's just stop and think about that. In the meantime, while he's thinking, (laughs) let me tell you all his secrets. No. (laughs) Uh, We, if anybody's listening that has recommendations of where we should go next in Australia, we were just deciding today whether or not Steve Schultz doesn't know this, but whether or not we should stay with Steve Schultz in Adelaide or like head out to Perth. I feel like if we go any further north in Queensland than we have, we're just going to get eaten by a caraway, and I don't feel like exactly. that. So, exactly. yeah. uh, exactly. so I don't know. So if anybody 
chimes in with any recommendations about where yeah. we should check out next. Last time we there, she got chased by a baby brown snake. I got chased by a baby. Oh my god! Yeah. I watched it. A baby what? And then I cried the whole way out of the jungle. A, a baby um, <laughs> brown snake. How big was the baby brown snake? He's still, okay. He's still thinking, so I'll cover for him. So in <laughs> Australia, the one thing I, I learned, we, I've been there. I've been there twice. Um, everybody's so nice. First of all, they just come up to you in the supermarkets anywhere, and they say, "Oh, Americans! Like, welcome, welcome! Like, do this, do that." It's, I'm. I hope you're having a great time. Like, I've never. I've never had an unpleasant run in with anybody. Um, but the second time, for whatever reason, so much unsolicited snake bite <laughs> advice, like so much, like from the, from the cashiers at the, at the Woolies, from like, uh, Uber drivers, you just constantly, you're yeah. not even asking for it. They're just like, listen, one time, <laughs> our friend, our friend Ian Mitchell, it was the second, it was, this was my first trip. There. He goes, all right. He's like, if you see a brown snake, Actually, never mind. If you see a brown <laughs> snake, it's too late. That's <laughs> not good advice, is it? You don't, you oh don't, my have, God, to, you don't have to wee on somebody's leg, or am I getting confused with some other animal? Uh, oh, right. the I mean, no. I think that's just the parties you go to. Yeah. And the be on your leg. Be on your leg no matter what. But yeah, do you have any... Okay, I'm going to tell the brown snake story. Tell the brown snake okay, story. Okay, tell the brown snake story. <laughs> so, um, we, were in, we were in Mount Tambourine. It was our last night in Brisbane uh, last year. And I don't know, we did a bunch that day. We were just kind of like, we, we did everything we wanted to see. But then like our last day, we just kind of like packed a bunch of like last minute trips in. And we were staying with our friend Leo Fatsies. And he took us late, 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 late in the day from his house in Brisbane up to Mount Tambourine. And we get there and it, it's dusk. Like the sun has set. The bats are coming out. Uh, the cicadas are out. It's beautiful. But... I felt like I was the only one thinking, like, okay, like, when we leave the jungle, it will be night. Like, it will be dark. And I'm in Birkenstocks and shorts, and I'm, <laughs> <laughs> this is not what I planned. And uh, the, the really good, actually, backtrack, the unsolicited snake bite advice from an Uber driver two days earlier ended up saving my life. Yeah. Um, he said, and it's true, um, the brown snake is the only snake in the world that will chase you if you run away from it. That's the only snake in the world that, that all the other snakes are like, okay, threat threat gone, crisis averted, they're leaving. And the brown snake is like, oh, yeah, motherfucker, you think you're going to get away from me? And they yeah. at you. You can run, but you can't oh. hide. Bloody <laughs> hell. Snakes. Oh, my God. <laughs> I think I can't go now. I remember I can't go <laughs> next year. <laughs> we, 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 Don't look <laughs> we, also, we also have very so, dangerous uh, animals in the UK. Uh, in the UK, we have a, a thing called a hedgehog. You know, you know we, can, we, we, we have freak a freak bear. bear. Yeah, big shout out to freak bear. Big shout out to uh, Dawn Cobe, whose birthday. Happy birthday. Happy oh, birthday, yeah. Dawn. Uh, hello to the feral kid, because he's always on. And Steve Schultz, etc. And A.D. Oh, Luby. Uh, our, oh. next pa- our next part of the show, <laughs> I'm not sure if you've ever seen this, uh, we do a celebrity thunderdome. <laughs> so so a, ce- a celebrity... <laughs> I yeah, so a Celebrity question. Thunderdome. So, uh, uh, so, so what it is is um, that we we randomly pick two celebrities. I will assign one to you, the great Lord Humongous. Uh, the other one goes to Skelly. Okay. You then have thirty seconds to explain or convince the audience to vote for your fighter. And then at the end of the show, uh, Stig tallies up the votes, and whoever gets the most votes will win. Uh, are you ready? Are oh, you ready what? to play, right. sir? Okay. Not even okay. Let's do it. Let's... What's the worst that can happen? <laughs> Quite a lot, really. Quite a lot. Yeah. Okay. So tonight's celebrity Thunderdome for the Lord Humongous, you have the um, Russian boxer from uh, Rocky. You have Dragos. Ivan Drago. And uh, mm-hmm. Pat, on your side, yeah. you have Miss Piggy. From the from the Muppets. Oh. Okay. Well, you were, but you haven't. So it's, you always it's Ivan Drago basket. versus Miss Piggy. So the great Lord Humongous, you have 30 no seconds on. to explain or convince the audience why they should vote for your fighter. Go. One of my alter egos right there. I mean, holy shit. Ivan I- Ivan Drago, as they say in Russia. Wow. Uh, 
what what is he like six foot six? You, you see him punching in the movie, hits with like a hundred pounds per square inch, some some shit like that, and and yeah, they show him about. definitely shooting up some uh, some steroids <laughs> there. So he's got that going for him. Yeah, Siberian uh, Express, Death from above. Uh, fucking a, he's well, you know, the cool guy. So I, I I got he's got that going. But true story. No. He hits Stallone so hard in the chest it puts Stallone in the hospital for three days because oh it disrupted God. his heartbeat. Guys were really throwing down in the ring. So, uh, you know, fucking, he, he, he took down Rocky. He took down Rocky Balboa. What's this thing you got to get Rocky? Come on. Well, thank yeah, you. Thank you. Cool. Round of applause that's there for, for the Lord. Yay. Okay, okay, uh, Skelly, you have 30 seconds to uh, fight back with Miss Piggy. Go. Okay, here I go. Well, um, Ivan Drago might hit hard, but have you seen Miss Piggy's karate chop? Yeah. You can karate chop a frog into the stratosphere. <laughs> so all she needs to get one good chop on that dude's chest and his ribs will crack, his chest will implode, he'll be blasted out back to Siberia or wherever the hell. And also, they have a history together, so he will be reluctant to raise fists against her because they do go back a ways, and I don't think he even wants that coming out into the public domain. <laughs> and... As a last, as a as a last minute uh, trump card, she can actually call on current squeeze Kermit, and Kermit is actually highly, highly toxic frog from far off regions of South America. So one touch, and he's going to start hallucinating. He'll drop his guard. One karate chop, and he's gone. He's he's in space. He's in orbit. Hey! Hey! I, 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 that's probably one of the best fights we've ever had. So, oh dear. Uh, so we have. Uh, I don't know. You know who my money's on. Yeah. <laughs> this is so wow. weird. That's a funny photo on this piggy. You've got photos with everybody. <laughs> oh, my God. Awesome. So, okay, guys, it's up to you online. You have to the end of the show, Miss Piggy or Ivan Drago. Uh, Ivan. Ivan. Ivan Drago. So, Ivan. I'm afraid you. <laughs> so. Now, do you have an answer to the question? Yes. Yes, yes. Yeah. <laughs> so you know, being the Lord Humongous, I, I'm 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 kind of known about the wasteland just a just a wee little bit. So I kind of carry like a gold membership card, kind of gets me wherever I want to oh, go. Oh, I know where the wasteland. <laughs> okay, that's the <laughs> except for this one time, I went to get drunk and go sing some karaoke at the Bikini Atoll, and they had <laughs> some uh, hack tube <laughs> work the front door. No, he's really just kidding. I'm just talking about <laughs> some some guy working the front door. Like, well, I need to see your membership card, sir. And uh, I, I couldn't get into the Bikini Atoll. We got turned thing. away. I got turned away. No, I'm not at the Bikini Atoll. Uh, no. Let me in. <laughs> I got, uh, yeah, exactly. Get uh, let me in. Uh, seriously, the next day for wait, you turned away. <laughs> Who? <laughs> so he learned it. But he uh, the name's not Dan. Coming in. I'm surprised he didn't recognize you. That's the <laughs> Those Those trainers. trainers. <laughs> <laughs> What did I, I, did I like joke or something to get in? I don't, I don't I even got remember. Didn't remember I was bruised for. She got spanked and lost her breath and could barely walk. Ooh. Oh, my God. They're like, well, that wasn't spunk. Jesus. <laughs> she, yeah. she, 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 she warned me. I, I'm like, I was like a little, little petite girl. And shame on me for underestimating a petite girl. She's like, okay, if you want to get in, you have to get spanked. And I was like, okay. Oh, like, I live with him. Oh, How hard can you spank oh, me? Oh, dear. <laughs> yeah. Well, there's a. There's a oh, funny yeah. story about that, actually, with Mechanized uh, at the, was it the Hard, uh, what's that place in? Heart of Heart So Attack we went there, the first time we'd ever been over to America, we went to the Heart, of, uh, Heart Attack Grill. Heart Attack Grill. Yeah, sorry. And Take if you, have you ever, have you, have, have <laughs> you ever been Disgusting there in, in LA? Oh, in Vegas. No, in, in Vegas. Vegas. Las Vegas. Vegas. Is that where they have, like, the, the 3,000 exactly. calorie burgers? Yeah. Exactly yeah, that yeah. place. Yeah. Outside and the so, so, and the and the food. You have doctors and everything in there. You get dressed so up as a patient in. and all that shit. Yeah, so we all went in, and, and literally everything's like triple cooked in fat and everything. It is like it's the maximum yeah. amount of. Meaning. Uh, but what we saw on the, on the way in is if you don't eat all your food, you get spanked by one of the waitresses. So the rest of V2A ah. spotted ah. the sign, but poor old mechanized didn't. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, uh, uh, Mechanized, do you want to explain, carry on with the story? I can't oh, remember. No, can. no, I can't remember. We've got, got the video somewhere. So, video literally, somewhere. we all finished. She had about half of the burger. We're killing ourselves laughing. Uh, and then, uh, 
I did not even get a burger. I got a hot dog because I thought it's a small portion. But now it was a humongous. <laughs> hey! 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 You need a watching a very irate and very angry German being spanked by this uh, by this waitress. But it was really my favorite hard. bit. My favorite yeah, bit was the we, song. We, we did sang. sing a little song. Remember the well, song? she she spanked Shall me three times. The song? Was it? Did it? Was it hurtful? Like, did yeah, you? Yeah, know? it was like full on, and, and I felt sick <laughs> of that sausage anyway. So, and on top of that, you get spanked. I'm like, like you your dinner, you're full, and you get spanked. That's yeah. Like usual standard operation <laughs> over here. You know, there's, there's humongous sausage and spankings, and I, you know, I see no problem here. <laughs> <laughs> well, it depends on the situation, I would say. <laughs> that was not the situation, I have to say. Uh, we, we, <laughs> next time, we the did sausage. video it, so we will post that video up sometime. It is hysterically funny. Oh, no. No, we are not. <laughs> Singing the song. <laughs> The German. So, um, <laughs> uh, we would. Uh, what we'd also like to do, if that's okay for you, uh, Lord Humongous, is one of the nights uh, yeah. we'd like to get some of the Wasteland DJs together, and we're actually uh, do a, like a DJ set, uh, and we get each DJ to do like yes. an hour set, and we we, we do it on um, sure. on one of the other streaming places, probably Twitch, Twitch or something. Like that. Yeah. Then the whole world can see what a horrible <laughs> DJ I really am. No, Smoke, you're not. <laughs> I, I suck at the DJ. He highly relies on fist bumps. <laughs> fist bumps and theatrics. Yeah. yeah. Not that, I got nothing. Uh, I got no you, game. You, the tunes you go for are awesome. <laughs> so, did you initially start off with in um, like country and western? Or, you know. Smooth <laughs> uh, uh, as jazz. Uh, yeah. yeah. Just hands. <laughs> <laughs> No. Can, can, can I ask the Lord a question? Um, sure. Is there any anything you can tell us about the masked mutilator? Oh, oh yeah. Oh, oh. Come on, I've, I've only read a bit about this, but it seems intriguing. Some of the guys in there, some of the WWE guys, and oh, come on, tell us more, tell us more. Okay. Sounds like okay. right up my street. This one. Let me get a beer. Okay, you go. Um, so one of my dogs of war, Paul Soot. He's my um, my lone wolf. Back in the nineties. Another friend of mine, uh, Glenn Hetrick, you might have heard of him. He's on the Sci-Fi Channel uh, show yeah. Face Off. He's one of the judges, the, the main judge yeah. there. Uh, uh, they were they worked on this movie, Mask Mutilator. This is the uh, early to mid '90s, somewhere in that. Uh, they were they were just young guys. Anyway, it was about a a, a group home of like bad boys, uh, and how this this home was run by like a former pro wrestler who was known for having killed somebody in the ring. Some uh, some cheesy storyline like that. Anyway, the project never got finished. It never saw the light of day until now. Fucking 25 years later, 30 years later, God only knows how many years. Uh, so what they needed was some way to make this old film viable in today. So they make the entire old footage a, uh, a, a flashback. So ah, they, they, they bring me in as the younger brother of the original mass mutilator and I'm being interviewed for like a podcast or something in today's world. And we kind of go back into the story of what happened way back when. So I'm really only in a very small part of the movie, I think at the, at the very end. Uh, but that kind of sets up the potential for a sequel perhaps wow. with uh, yours truly. Uh, ah. what? Um, but it was, it was a lot of fun. I, I filmed only just a little bit. It was a, a, just one day of myself and uh, this, uh, another actor, Steve Mittman, who was doing the, the podcast interview. And there was a scene where I, I, get, I get fed up. I, I get up and I, I, I grab him and I get in his face and I, I tell him this interview is over. And I'm frothing at the mouth and spitting on him and stuff. And you know, then the director calls cut after the scene's over. And I put him back down. I go, man, wow, Steve, you're, you're really good. You look really scared. Like, what are you fucking kidding me? <laughs> <laughs> and I was just there. Oh, okay. Fine. And, and that's directed uh, by Nick Nallo, is it? That film. I'm sorry, say again? The, who's that directed by? Is that Nick? Uh, Nick, isn't it? Nick Nallo, isn't it? I think. Why isn't Dale doing it? It's not Dale. No, Dale's the producer. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. I, I work mostly with the producer. The uh, director, you know what? I, I, if I knew there was a quiz, <laughs> I would have studied. I, uh, I no, no, that's not cool. No, just, I just thought it looks really interesting. Any ideas when they're looking to release it? 
Oh, it's on Amazon. Oh, it's out now. Oh, brilliant. You can they buy on a DVD. Yeah, just stick. If you yeah. can put a link up on the chat. So people, check it out. Check out the great yep. Lord yeah. Humongous. Uh, have you have you ever decided to go into it or do any other films? Because you know you've got your documentary. You're very theatrical. Uh, you've got a real amazing stage presence. Have you ever thought about like? Oh, thank you. I, I think about it all the time. Somebody asked me once. Uh, it was my original Toady at Wasteland said to me, you know, Tank, why aren't you in the costuming industry? Yeah. You're, you're really good at making this stuff. And I said, Dad, I'd, I'd rather be in front of the camera. I don't want to be mm. behind the scenes. Uh, no. Yeah, I would. What? You don't, you don't want to be behind the scenes. No, I don't want to be behind the scenes. Um, yeah, I, I would love to do more uh, more stuff uh, on stage, on screen. I've, I've done some. Uh, I was <laughs> I was Daddy Warbucks in my daughter's uh, production. <laughs> Manny. <laughs> oh, brilliant. Uh, it was adorable. Yeah, I was. Uh, I played Sorry, the. Tank was adorable. The, yeah. uh, Oh, you should just see him at home. He's so cute, you guys. What stories do you want me to tell about? No, I'm no. <laughs> Funny strippers. Yeah. Funny. <laughs> I, I think we should get Lady Among Us on a separate, yeah. uh, separate show. Oh, yeah. yeah. When, 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 when Tank's going to be out of the state. <laughs> no. Anyway, Daddy Warbucks footage is, will be in the documentary, and it's super sweet. Ah, oh, great. Amazing. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's a lot of fun. I, I love being on stage. I love working a crowd. One of the coolest things I think I ever did on stage was a long, long time ago. I was in a uh, a community theater production down in Virginia. I, I played a couple different characters. I played Superman was one of the characters, actually. But there was one scene uh, that kind of closed the whole show where I came walking out uh, center stage as, as other members of the cast were crisscrossing back and forth in front of me and behind me, calling out my name looking for me and I was delivering a monologue about how alone I was, how lonely and how nobody could find me. Nobody knew who I was. I was, you know, I was in this horrible place and I came down off the front of the stage, down some steps and actually into the house and like the, the, the lights went down on stage and it was just a spotlight on me and it was a very sad thing that I was delivering and there was not a dry eye in the house and I was like, ah. Oh. You know, there's no witnesses. Yeah, I got right. you. Oh, please. <laughs> I got, I grabbed their emotions and I yeah. shook them up and it, it it felt empowering. It felt amazing. It was it was electric. Oh it was really God. really cool. But uh, he's a, he's been in a lot of community theater. You did you were Zach in uh, Course Line. Course Line, and that yeah. was incredible. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. did a great job. I, we did a scene there where myself and uh, one of the uh, actors, after he gave his monologue, I came down and, and we just hugged. And it was another one of those moments where, like, you just everybody in the theater got choked up. Oh, it was pretty cool. Wow. Yeah, Imperator Divius says you were freaking terrifying in that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we haven't watched okay. it. Yet. <laughs> I know. <laughs> oh, I've, I've seen. I've, too scary. I've, I need to it, own a copy. It was it. news to me that you could watch it on Amazon. I was like, no shit. No, you have to buy it on right. Amazon. <laughs> Uh, you know, come on. Yeah, I'm just showing everybody my Lord, uh, my DJ Humongous sticker that you gave me, which is absolutely stunning. Uh, yeah, it is. Yes. Yeah. You, did you get I've one got, of these? I've, I've got that one. Oh, yes, I've got one of those over there. <laughs> okay. And I've got the. Do, do you print? Do you get your own bottle tops? Because you're very. Flamboyant on stage, throwing stuff out. It, it, do you have a different like bottle top each year? Can people collect? Uh, I, yeah, I, I try to. Uh, I, I, uh, do you? I, uh, I try to. Be, but the, the, the humongous <laughs> outfit isn't exactly easy for putting bottle tops anywhere, is it? <laughs> well, you can that fill can it out in the front a little bit. Oh, 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 <laughs> oh no. Oh, I no. saw Humongous crying. Only asked for a bottle top. Well, there you go. <laughs> yeah, I like to throw I'll because I'm such a lousy DJ. I have to get the crowd on my side by throwing stuff into the crowd, like T-shirts and uh, I got foam tridents, dancers. You know what? I, I got to spank girls on stage. I've put on a good show. She got really upset with me one year because uh, uh, she's on stage filming the DJ battle. What? I guess it was the DJ battle. That was my first year. I, was I think filming. it was the year I, I went up against him more yeah. than Joe. Yeah, Jeff. Um, that would have been second. And or second year, yeah. Well, and so she's filming, and she looks down for a second, looks back. Where, oh, yeah. where the fuck did he go? He's supposed oh, to be yeah. on stage. No, 
<laughs> He's down the crowd in the pit. <laughs> Having a good time. I, I had to. I had no choice. It was, like it was the motherfucker. Well, yeah, we, we always have that every year with uh, Mechanized when we, uh, with the War Boys, because she always dives and jumps off into the War Boys. Uh, during the set at Wasteland. Yeah. The trouble is, um, we've got like a song, yep. another song are just about oh, to start. We're like, holy <laughs> shit, what have she got? <laughs> I, I talked to the powers that be at Wasteland about uh, doing a stage dive during the humongous set. <laughs> On certain terms, I am not allowed to do that. They don't carry yeah. a big enough insurance policy. <laughs> Forgetting humongous uh, what, what did you think of our surprise last year when we brought snow cannons? <laughs> that, that, that was, was fucking awesome. great. Who that saw that coming to Wasteland? Yeah. Holy shit. <laughs> and that was such a windy night, too. Yeah. So the snow it was brilliant. Yeah. Yeah, 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 that was amazing. We, we, Are you doing that again? Plan something even some worse other for next year. All right. Well, yeah. no, see, next year you need not snow cannons, but snow cones because <laughs> it's fucking hot out. Like, oh, oh, yeah, get everybody the ice, get cream. The ice cream. Get our ice cream bun out. <laughs> <laughs> so wait, what would the flavor be for Lord Humongous ice cream? Oh, like, what it be, tears and destruction. And gasoline. <laughs> Vodka. Gasoline. Vodka. 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 If it was Vodka. Beer, gasoline. What would it be called? The, the blood of my enemies. The blood of your enemies. Yeah, I don't know. Mm, I don't know. <laughs> you know it's something like that. Severe disappointment. <laughs> so um. Great. Okay. Disappointment oh. with mint. Yes. Oh. Disappointment. That's so is, a good is, is, it, is it true that you are a reasonable man? <laughs> ask her that question. Oh, 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 he just oh, answered oh, He's a reasonable man. Hey, do you want me to tell the truth that you're a little softy? What? 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 <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Next question. Over to you, Mechanized. A <laughs> uh, uh, quick, quick, quick question before Mechanized then carries, then carries on. It, can your neighbours see you in the back garden dressed like that? Or are they. <laughs> hey, Jake. How you doing, buddy? Good to see you. <laughs> well, they're dogs, uh, yeah. They're, the dogs <laughs> they're on lockdown. To be, yes, yes, I, I am visible. I have, I have one neighbor that can actually see in my backyard, but he, <laughs> he's a good guy. He's he understands. He knows I'm crazy. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, the next section of our show is never have I ever. So mm -hmm. where we ask our audience. So I give them two choices. One is true. One is a lie. Okay. So this year week which is quite funny actually because you mentioned him already so with our war boy song we always go to the crowd and witness them for Valhalla so my question is now about witnessing so number one have I ever uh, never have I ever witnessed Dolph Lundgren or never have I ever witnessed Ronan Harris from BNB Nation so, so so what do you reckon Lord Humongous Ooh. has she chromed Ronan from VMV Nation, or has she splattered in the face Dolph Lundgren? I'm going to go Dolph Lundgren either. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, definitely can be. So, so, and I'm, so which one did you say, sorry? It's Dolph Lundgren yeah. or Ronan Harris, so between them two. Oh, Roland Harris. Roland right, Harris, so definitely. audience, okay. you have time to... Uh, before the end of the show, to quickly get your votes in. Who was it? Was it Mr. VMV Nation, Ronan Harris? Or was it uh, Dolph Lunds Lundgren? <laughs> well, Lundgren! I've been on the side uh, I've been on the side for a couple of hours now, and it's, not, it's, it's, it's going well. So what is the Mr. Humongous drinking? Yes. The dentures back so, in. So, <laughs> I'm actually drinking seltzer water, but I'm drinking it out of a very special mug that was given to me by my, my good friend, fellow Wastelander, City Buster. You want to give a shout-out uh, to Yeah, this is, this is a Juggers of the Wasteland. Amazing. That looks really cool. It's this a beautiful. A, a very yeah, it looks mind. amazing. Yeah. Is there anybody yeah. else you'd like to give a, a shout-out to? You have the air, sir. Every Wastelander that I'm going to miss this year because of the shutdown, I am very saddened by this news. Sadly, I kind of saw it coming. But I'm going to miss every one of you motherfuckers. Holy shit, no idea. You're going to get hugged extra hard. Yeah, yeah. yeah. This, is, uh, this is going to be a rough year for us, but we'll get through. 
for everyone, I think. I mean, it's worldwide, you know. It's just yeah. like, I can't believe it, you know, but it's one of them things. We have to go through it. So what, yeah. are you watching any TV? Are you watching any Netflix or any films you've seen? Anything you could recommend to the crowd? We watched uh, because it was oh. made. Yeah. We watched The Wicker Man last night. We watched The Wicker Man. Ah, well, the original or the remake? Yeah. Uh, oh, the, the original. original. The original. Of course. Yeah. Of course. Of course. Best um, oh, God. Oh, Christ. <laughs> oh, Christ. <laughs> yeah, uh, that would be the same. Great. Um, okay. We haven't been doing anything intellectual or highbrow. We literally watched all six Terminators and Lethal <laughs> Weapon so far. Like, that's what <laughs> show. Yeah, good times. I had never seen all four weapons i definitely never seen all six terminators and neither are these and you no, have, you haven't no. seen lethal weapon so we're doing dumb stuff like that and i think next we're gonna finish off what are we gonna do the matrix we're matrix. just we're just doing like dumb shit we should have seen now yeah like the entire trilogy like yeah, i've only ever seen have you, watched, yeah. have you watched tiger king but, uh, on netflix <laughs> oh yeah no, no he st we started and he started complaining so i never put it back on <laughs> I've not finished Tiger King because he won't stop complaining about it. I want to watch Clone Wars. What the hell? <laughs> he did want to watch. Have you got Disney Plus? Any good? Oh mm -hmm. yeah. Yep. You know Mandalorian. Yeah. Oh god, the Mandalorian. Yeah, I've yeah. noticed in the states anyway, um, it freezes a lot. I think just a lot of people are home, and uh, they the Disney Plus just doesn't seem to have the capacity. Um, but that's really not a big deal. First, that's a first world problem. To that's the first world. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. if you haven't, uh, I'm a huge yeah. David Lynch fan and a huge, huge tweet. And if you haven't huge. watched, huge, 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 huge. If you haven't seen David Lynch's The Straight Story, it's on Disney Plus. It's the only movie he ever shot with Disney. And you'd think like David Lynch and Disney, like if that's not enough of an enticement to see what the hell that's all about. <laughs> it's a beautiful story. Um, David Lynch is big in mental meditation big into love and kindness and it's just a beautiful story about love and kindness in somebody's life when they've been shut out for, by other people they still want to go and, and express their love and kindness to somebody yeah, and, like exactly yeah <laughs> <laughs> anyway if you have this watch, watch the straight story. story that is a that is a very good recommendation thank you very much uh, mechanized have you You're been welcome. watching anything no this week i had like unfortunately not the best week on live, so I didn't watch much and I didn't do much. So now, sorry, I can't report anything. Skelly, were you up to <laughs> anything? Um, yeah, I've been watching Star Trek Discovery and I quite oh. like it. Cool. Controversial <laughs> choice these days, I know, but. And Stig, over to you, anything? Uh, I've gone through um, most of the Bourne films again. Oh, okay. Because I quite like, quite like the Bourne <laughs> films. <laughs> Jesus Christ! Yeah, Jesus. The oh, they're good. They're... Sorry. <laughs> 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 On the ice creams, we've got uh, gasoline, um, axle grease, or Moscow Mule for some strange, bizarre reason. Oh, that's his favourite drink. Who said Moscow Mule? Uh, who was that? Come on, tell me, tell me. I didn't write that down. Oh, it's okay if you don't know. <laughs> it took me miles to go back. Yeah, I know him very well. Not... Just make something up. Caramel apple. <laughs> Is this Scott? Oh, it's Scott. Scott Kane. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, he, he does. He also threw all flavoured. Caramel apple. Oh, he does. <laughs> <laughs> I got gasoline. <laughs> that, that is the unknown treat of the Lord Humongous in the Wasteland is uh, uh, caramel apples. Oh. <laughs> oh, sounds uh, nice. His soft spot. That's it. No. Yeah. The, the key to a happy Humongous is a fed Humongous. And <laughs> I, I've learned that the hard way. I started bringing like actual coolers on wheels to conventions with sandwiches in it just for him. <laughs> Minute he starts to bitch, I give him a sandwich, and then he's fine for a couple hours. And then he starts to bitch a, again, so I give him a sandwich. Thing. It's a bloke. <laughs> Beat the beast. Yeah. We're all like the beast. It it's is. Yeah, we're, no. we're building our, uh, our war camp, and I'm busy to eat, so she's standing next to me, shoveling food into my mouth as I'm busy building stuff. And he's just it's cursing. Great. He's not even uh, looking at me. He's just like, fuck, 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 fuck. <laughs> so at the war camp everywhere. with the dogs of war, how did you get the vehicles out there? Because you've got the vehicles are. Who built them as well? Because they are just spot on, aren't they? Oh, yeah, yeah, they are. Yeah, I get a big, big shout out to a uh, good pack, Wolfpack Dave Giovanni. Uh, he lives in um, Michigan, Detroit. Um, he pretty much built everything, just about. I mean, some of the bikes and some of the buggies were built by some of the other uh, dogs. 
Uh, I, I have my Wes bike here, uh, so that gets carted out thanks to uh, Mutt every year. But yeah, they stay at uh, Phoenix Auto uh, with uh, with Ron Griffith. Um, well, shout out shout out to Max because Max is honestly one of the one of the main arteries. Yeah. Of, of war, he builds every year. I mean, he's he's married, and between the two of them, I think what they have like five, no more than oh, five, like seven. Seven. I, I think, think they have seven kids Gosh. between the two of them. Max is full time father in Detroit, and Max is a kid too. So that's and Max is also a kid. Yeah. So Max. No matter how tight money is, every year he's doing some kind of vehicle build in his garage in Detroit all year long. And uh, we went out to, like, three years ago, probably, yeah. to film him building one of our cars. So Max puts in, we obviously do, and we, we we chip in where we can, the whole tribe, I mean. But he, uh, you know those, like, vehicle haulers that you see on the interstates? He will hire one of those to go to his house in, in Michigan, and he loads up these post-apocalyptic vehicles on there with, like, fancy oh Mercedes and BMWs. They get carted out to Phoenix Auto in uh, California City, and they stay with our friend Ron at the garage there. When we all get to to the campsite, we all do what we call the Ronvoy, and we Ronvoy into town, and then we in, usually just in one big van, and then somebody drives the van back, and the rest of us at great <laughs> risk. <laughs> oh my right. God! Are these highly vehicles on the California City streets? There's not street legal. There's no horns. There's no brake lights. There's no headlights. And last year, and this is not Max's There's fault. No this is not Max's fault. <laughs> there was like every single vehicle broke down, oh, and only, only he made it back to camp. And we all had to like come back one <laughs> one and like pick us up off the side of the road. It was, it's, it's, it's at great personal risk that we do the wrong boy. <laughs> yeah. I must admit, it, it could it could be more risky next time, uh, uh, Tank, because uh, Mama Giddy is um, suggesting she could make you. Uh, Caramel and apple mead. Oh, oh my god. Ooh, yeah, that yum. was my thought. Danger, oh. danger, high voltage. Have, have you ever tried the V2A firewater at Wasteland? I haven't. I don't think what? So. Maybe, Maybe you have, you just don't remember. It's hard to the straw. I get you something with the straw next time. There you go. <laughs> We'll do that then. I keep a strong pocket. So I think we, we had a great <laughs> idea for a, for a new game at Wasteland. Well, Mechanized did when she was talking to AD from uh, Mad Max Museum. Mechanized, do you want to mm -hmm. explain to uh, the Lord Humongous what the, the new feature will be next year? Can she remember? She's going Just mini golf. The new, the big new feature. Uh, we're going to have golf. Mini golf. Yes. We're, we're right. going to bring mini golf to first. the Wastelands. <laughs> I think that would be so much fun. <laughs> because I, I never have a last week about mini golf. I think it's, I'm not be, it's, it's going to be a great idea. Oh, oh, we're, um, oh, yeah. we're, we're also going to have to do some mad stuff over That's at the Silverton Collective. Uh, would they? Would they get the jokes over there? Oh, uh, <laughs> get most jokes. Yeah. Oh, Jared. Kind of online. Hello, Jared. Hey. Oh, right, is he? <laughs> Excellent. Oh, yes. Hello, hello all. We, we are, we are super, 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 super <laughs> excited to all come back to Wasteland next year. Do, yeah. do, do you have a question <laughs> for Tank? Do you have any embarrassing stories you would like to ask? <laughs> yeah, I, I look out for that one. I look specially. We'll type it now, Jared. <laughs> Jared. Jared, upload that shroud of humongous from the Dragon Con bed. Where <laughs> oh, oh my God! And so, Tank, you know, right? It's funny sitting next to him in this because I told him in, early when he was getting dressed, he smells like wasteland because his costume comes out and it's leather, sweat, and spray tan. And when I smell the, when I smell those three things it's... together, it's wasteland immediately. But he also gets spray tanned, obviously, for Dragon Con. And Jared sent us a really funny picture. Instead of the Shroud of Turin, which is obviously, you know, from biblical times, it was it was the Shroud of Humongous, and Tank laid down on Jared's bed with white sheets and left a spray tan <laughs> sweat mark of like the... <laughs> the Shroud of Jesus. <laughs> so so what, what color tan, uh, what color do you go for, sir? Do you go for Chippendale orange, or, you know, what is the, what is the color? <laughs> Chippendale orange. Yeah. <laughs> <That's fun. laughs> I think no matter what color you pick, it has some sort of tint of orange to it for some reason. But I go for a 
<laughs> we know that from here in the UK. There's a special area of women. They're very orange. Oh, yeah. God. <laughs> oh, the Oompa Loompas. So, the Oompa Loompas, so think, yeah. Oh, dear. I'm, I'm I don't like the look of it. Irish, so I'm just taking No. Michael Stefan doesn't know fire water either. So what happened? Is it all the war boys consumed well, it all yeah. or what's going on here? Well, some people have it, but <laughs> they don't Captain remember Tim having it. Yeah. 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 Last year. Yeah. yeah, Captain Timmy. Mama Giddy says the caramel apple oh. bee will be started tomorrow. Oh. So, um, we, we bring, uh, we've got a massive metal um, flask. Um, it's about two litres, is it? Something like that. Uh, with our V2A fire firewater. So normally we, we spread it around. Uh, it's normally the war boys go for most of that. But uh, last year, the, the legendary Captain Timmy <laughs> d decided to drink... Uh, <laughs> Decided to drink the whole thing on his own. <laughs> Two flasks. Two flasks. So we had about four litres of vodka. That yeah. explains why we didn't see Timmy and poor, that. poor old Rose, yeah. he was wearing his armour, <laughs> his fight armour, which is... How heavy is that, Stig? It's super heavy. 20, 20, heavy. 20 kilos oh, wait, something like that. But poor old Rose had to carry him back because he, like, passed out. He was that drunk. She had to carry him back <laughs> to his... Uh, to his base, so fair due to Rose. We love Rose. She's always a star. And he had to sleep yeah, in because no one else could get it off, to take they? it off. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Jared says he hasn't got a question, but he has embarrassing Ooh. stories. So yes. go for it, Jared. I'm oh, reading. Jared. I'm reading. <laughs> yeah, it's your bodies. You just sit now and and uh, Jared, yeah, don't Jared worry, there's only show. thousands of people going to see this. Only thousands. <laughs> From one of his best friends and his partner. All yeah, so. Ah. Oh, wow, look oh, at dear. the time. You know, when does this thing end anyway? It's getting late. Now, on that note, Stig, yes. how is our exercise video going? I think there was another video this week. Yep. Yeah, um, well, I reckon... The one, I, the one that's still got my attention is uh, is the stand team standing, which did a tag... Yes. Not tag team, but... A the double team. Yeah. Yeah. And I reckon they're easily the winner. Okay. So, uh, round, round three of V2A round combat. Round of applause. Round of oh, applause. well done. So, the standings. So, well done. Yeah. So we post up that video on here, on the channel. Yeah. yeah well, it's on the cult of V2A, but I can... Yeah, uh, but if we can put a link maybe on this later. So, so what yeah, we, what I'll put it on got, now. Tank, if you've Thank you. This, we have a, every week, uh, Warboy Steve is a body combat instructor normally in the uk yeah, in the uk exercise class and he uh, releases a v2a combat track uh, and people have a go at it every week to to get fit at home so yeah that's cool that's awesome yeah i've just been dancing to david burns awesome. stop making sets but maybe gotcha. yeah did you have the big shirt had the big jacket on <laughs> i do, i just i need somebody to make that big jacket I would go to Dragon Con in that in that costume. In you a go second. everywhere. I would live. Have, have you seen that mashup? Certain precedent. Oh no, I don't, and I don't oh. want to because that sounds like I would. It would like tarnish my favorite band for. Oh no, no, it's genius. <laughs> okay. It's genius. Okay. Yeah. All right, so I'll hunt it down. What, what, what kind no, of exercise great, great do you have to do to keep in trim? Because you are a super fit guy. Oh, I was, yeah. Then this quarantine hit, and I just That's... sit on the couch. I nice try. Thing. I try to get him up every day, and he fights me. It doesn't work. It doesn't, it doesn't work. No. Uh, <laughs> yeah, the, the the proper routine when I'm following it is uh, getting up early to do a, a half hour of cardio every morning on an empty stomach, uh, followed by some abs. <laughs> then you go work for the day, eating properly, you know, chicken and green beans and water and all that <laughs> kind of stuff. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And then come home and uh, and lift weights for like an hour every night, different body part each night. Um, I was doing uh, karate for uh, three, four days a week, something like that. So it'd be an hour at a time doing the karate. And uh, it really came down to just eating properly mm -hmm. is what it, uh, the, yeah. the biggest impact. Um, but yeah, when I first got into shape for Humongous, I started out at like 265 pounds. Uh, I had a, a customer of mine who was a former uh, amateur bodybuilder. Said he wanted to get me down to 205 for the role. I was like, 205? How the fuck am I going to lose 60 pounds? That's ridiculous. Yeah. It'll never happen. And uh, sure enough, <laughs> just the day I left for Wasteland in 2011, I was 205. It was... It was wow. Blimey. That's willpower. Serious yeah. willpower. Yeah. yeah, he inspires me. He inspires a lot of people. I'm foolish determination. I mm -hmm. think. Well, if, if you... <laughs> 
I can, I can possibly <laughs> if, say if that. If you've ever got a spare 15 <laughs> minutes, we would love uh, if you could do us a uh, video, us uh, a, a Lord Humongous sort of workout for people. Just a very simple beginner's <laughs> guide to some exercise. Right, right, okay. Yeah, that, that would be, honestly, that would yeah. be awesome. Because there's so many people there sat you at go. home who can't go to the gym or anything now. And uh, that would be awesome to, to motivate people and get them in trim. Uh, Mechanized, do you have a, a, a question from Jared? I haven't, it hasn't come up yet, no. I'm waiting. Uh, While we're waiting for that, can we introduce a segment called Let's Embarrass Lord Humongous? <laughs> no, what do no. You know? <laughs> if you guys want to know, I'll tell you. <laughs> Go for it. Oh. Go for it. Let's have it. Uh, <laughs> oh, I yeah. Yeah. Oh. No. Is, I is, is, is there is there any? Uh, what's your favourite drink? So if we saw you in a pub, both of you, what what would uh, what would be your choice drink? Can I guess yours? Sure. I don't have to guess. I know what they would be. What would it be? Wait. Tank likes something pink. Something pink. Tanks <laughs> like tank likes light and fruity things. You love Moscow mules and you love hard apple yep. ciders. So I think you would be having one of those two things. Or Tito's and yeah, tonic. Yeah. So I think honestly, mine my, my go to is a Tito's and soda water with the lime. Mm. Down easy. But I love IPAs and I love white wine. But I would either get depending on my mood, I would either get an IPA. Is, is or there Tito's any good and soda. beers from uh, near you? Any local beers? Because there's lots of local breweries. Is there anything? You know, yeah, we, uh. haven't, we haven't tried. There's Pine Island Brewery, mm -hmm. and there's a new one. Blue is Blue Arrow actually brewing? They will be. They, they will be have, brewing. Yeah, they're going to grow their own hops. Yeah, uh, the Hudson Valley is not far from us, and that's uh, that's in New York, and that's have a lot of great breweries. Is the story coming in? She's oh. grinning. She's yeah. grinning. Oh dear. Oh dear. Well, we're just waiting for the story to come in, which is probably going to be really, really bad. Who was? Okay, I oh, it is. Oh, oh, it is. Who, who was your favourite <laughs> character in Fury Road? Oh, wow. It can't be Lord Humongous. Oh, my God. What are you doing? Yeah. Hmm. Uh, pro probably Rictus. Yeah. Hmm. And uh, actually having uh, spent time, well, spent time. I mean, it was uh, Nathan, yeah. Yeah, that Nathan. Was... He was... His, his wife and his son were uh, were on our RV at Wasteland. So Having we Rick just come into our RV at Wasteland <laughs> yeah. was just... <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm like, oh, man, don't, don't bang that. And, we didn't, and we, I'm so bummed. We didn't want to fangirl out and ask for... Oh, I wanted to fangirl out. What are you talking about? <laughs> Neither of us <laughs> and we uh, never really saw him. So busy. Yeah. But we I'm, stayed with his... Busy. But we, we hosted his wife and their son in our RV most of the time and that just was trying, cool. to that keep, was fun. trying to keep the little guy happy yeah. and they were so sweet yeah, yeah. it was yeah. really really nice. my family so can i go to the story yes. nope. go, 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 go. no look at the oh, time look. look at the time <laughs> <laughs> so apparently a few years ago I, w I was at a convention with tank and he had been going on on how healthy and clean he had been eating and stay uh, to stay in great shape and then <laughs> about 2 a.m. after couple of drinks i see him eating leftover french fries of a random room service tray that was left outside someone's hotel room <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> what is the thank you jared <laughs> i love yeah, that <laughs> i see no pictures <laughs> i cannot oh. confirm tonight that that ever happened i, can <laughs> I call him the garbage disposal yeah. like garbage <laughs> is in court keep my own leftovers it's a <laughs> we don't talk about that if, if i don't eat fast enough he just eats it on me yeah the french fries were good i mean they <laughs> were sitting right there they were still hot. i know honey you need you can't waste your food you need no you can't waste they, they no you can help you for right, so them for later <laughs> Thank you, Jared. <laughs> yeah, that's great. We're going to have to get Jared, you, Jared on here sometime yeah. because I know a lot of people who've got some great stories as well. So we were... <laughs> <laughs> yes, Jared, it would be fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, a question. We, we have, uh, in a couple of weeks' time, we have Greg Van Borsum, who was the stunt coordinator for Fury Road, is coming on. Uh, he was actually one of the war boys in the film as well. Is there a question you would like to ask him? 
Well, when Jared and I were on a, a panel at Dragon Con years ago about uh, post-apocalyptic films and culture and that sort of stuff, and the whole Fury Road thing came up because that was new at the time, uh, we were asked like some, what some of our favorite stunts were in the film. And as somebody who rides motorcycles, I was really impressed with the, the work that the motorcycle yeah. riders, the, the rock riders did. Uh, I, I'd love to know if, if he had any part in... Uh, you know, working with those guys to, to do those incredible aerial feats that they did. I mean, I know this, you know, they do it on X Games and that kind of shit, but wow, that, wow, that was, I was just blown away by that. Yeah. That's, it's that's so tough. physical, isn't it? You see someone's behind yeah. the scenes stuff and you think, Jesus, and in that heat. Yeah. yeah. In desert. It's not yeah. like you're doing it in some sort of, uh, I don't know, yeah. back lot in Hollywood. Right, right. Incredible. So what's with man and cheese now? <laughs> We're going to do man and cheese. Man or, man or cheese. Man or cheese. Should we'll get it one day. Okay, so, so one, one day, day I will get, get it. Because I don't yeah. even the concept. We always play it on the tour bus, and I can't get it either. Yeah. So, Wait, so if you don't this get is, it, this is aimed at uh, it's uh, the Lord Humongous and the Lady Humongous. Uh, so we are. It's just that the answer is either man or cheese. Okay. Uh, so Phil, Phil, okay. Phil Collins. Yeah. Don't, don't. Correct. Jeez. Skelly? Yes. Fuck <laughs> 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 this game. Just don't think it. Don't think. Okay. Okay. Don't think. Okay. You wrote invisible touch. That's not cheese. All Tom right. Selleck. He's a man. That's, that's a man. That's a man. Oh. But the moustache is part <laughs> cheese. Oh, yeah. Half a point. Camembert. Good point. Oh, yes. That is cheese. Who? Camembert. Oh, okay. It's not Wensleydale, but it's good cheese. Skelly? Bruce Wayne. Bruce what? Wayne? Did they say Bruce Wayne? Bruce Wayne. I mean, that's obviously a man, but I hope it's also a cheese. A cheesy man. Oh, <laughs> yes. Val, Val Kilmer. <laughs> Val Kilmer. Uh, exactly, geez. exactly. The six, the six, yeah. I don't, the six I million dollar man. Yeah. Oh, that's a man. <laughs> oh, my God, I grew up with that man. Liberace. That's a man barely alive, baby. What yeah. was that, Skelly? Liberace. Oh, Liberace. Liberace. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. What do you think, baby? Is that man or cheese? I don't understand this game. You just say cheese sometimes. That's it. Think too much. That's it. You don't think. That is a real thing. With the force. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Yes. Just, just, uh, just, just to concentrate your mind, Jared yeah. says there is a photograph oh. of said French fry incident. <laughs> carry on, um, carry on. Uh, so after, so I think after Manichi, so I think I think you did very well on that. Uh, you uh, you got virtually everyone right. So congratulations. First time ever. Yeah. Yeah. We did oh, this with well uh, Mr. Minty, and he didn't have a clue what we were on about at all. Emil, <laughs> <laughs> no. I, 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 I no, <laughs> that's it. I we do it for yeah. years, and I don't. <laughs> I think the more the now, some good news, though. Jared has got photographic evidence of the fry moment, so we get that sent oh later God. to post up. Oh. And Jared wants to join hey, us on the show as well. Hey. So I cannot hey. wait. So, a quick question back to Tank. <laughs> of um, your Comic Cons, when you go to different Comic Cons, when you're not Lord Humongous, which is your favourite Comic Con and which is your favourite character not Lord Humongous when you go into those Comic Cons? Who's your second favourite? Uh, well, my, my favorite convention would be Dragon Con. Uh, that's, that's pretty much just a cosplay convention. Uh, it's, it's just a wild party. Um, the biggest reaction that I get as a character would be I go when I hook up with my, my buddy Lon Brown, who does an amazing yeah, rock. Right. The oh, group great, of us yeah. together, we actually had like a choreographed uh, fight scene where we recreated like the highlights from their, their bouts. And we'd have somebody with a boombox <laughs> playing Eye of the Tiger. And we'd go in, and we'd, we'd duke it out on the floor of Dragon Con. And there'd be people surrounding us, like 12 people deep with trying to take pictures and video and stuff. <laughs> they, they would go absolutely nuts for it. Uh, interesting thing about that character is I don't have to say much. It's very, very uh, easy to do. That one's cool. Um, an another character that I have that I don't have to work very hard for because I'm not very animated would be Nan from uh, Superman yeah. 2 where... Lady Humongous wow. is uh, Ursa, and of course, going back to Jared, Jared. Butler, he is our uh, General yeah. Zod, so the three of us... I've seen a, I've seen a photo of yes, you three, I've seen a photo of you three, 
uh, as that, and I thought it was yeah. a, a shot from the film. Seriously, I couldn't believe, I couldn't <laughs> believe how good it was. It was stunning, seriously. Thank you. You know, one of the, it was the one and only time in my entire life I was okay with being catcalled by a, a Manhattan construction worker. We were dressed like that, we were walking into New York Comic Con, and um, you could just, you feel the guy's eyes on me. And that was the day I learned how many men fetishized Ursa, which I just, is not surprising, but I just hadn't thought about. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> She's hot. Fair I guess. enough. I, like, yeah. I just hadn't thought about it. So I'm like, okay, you know, you're walking around Manhattan at Comic-Con in a costume. You're going to get stared at. It doesn't bother me, but you can just feel the eyes on me. And we're walking past this construction site. And no one says, none of the guys say anything to me. But they're all just staring as I walk by. And then right, right as I pass them, one of them goes, hey, yo, you look better than the one in the movie. <laughs> oh, <yes. laughs> I'm trying to find pictures. Trying to find pictures there. Well, I, I have a New York Comic Con story. The first time I took wow. Conan the Destroyer uh, to Comic Con, yeah. I, I went there with a couple buddies of mine from work. Uh, we took the ferry over. We got stopped every so often for photos and stuff. They, uh, my, my buddy was doing uh, uh, Nosferatu, and his girlfriend was Vampirella. They looked fantastic. Uh, so there I was as Conan. So we get into the Javits Center where the convention is, and uh, I get stopped again for photos. My friends are standing around waiting for me to finish with the photos. You know what, guys? Like, when I'm done here, uh, you know, I'll meet up with you. Just go on inside, and I'll text you when I'm when I'm done. Well, <laughs> eight, eight hours, hours later, oh, <laughs> they came walking back out. I'm still standing in the same spot in the uh, the <laughs> the Javits Center, still getting my picture taken, and I had to pee so badly. <laughs> Uh, I, I I couldn't get a break. The photographers would not leave me alone. That's Conan had such wow. an impact on yeah, me. Wow. It's crazy. Yeah, wow. I love that picture of, Co of you as Conan on the tube. The tube. Um, that was just brilliant. Yeah. yeah. Amazing. So here I found, I know this is like the low quality, but here's one I took of... Uh, <laughs> oh my Hank God. Wow. wow. Obviously at, at the Philadelphia Art Museum steps where Rocky oh runs gosh. up. Classic. That was yeah. Fun. I think you made like three hundred dollars in tips that day. Oh, over three. We, wow. We, we said, hey, you know, if it's cool, we're we're doing this for tips, and we made like three hundred some odd dollars that day oh just taking God. pictures with people. Yeah, it's crazy. crazy. It was great. I'm looking for the Zod Squad photos because yes. Marianne Butler did an amazing job taking. She, did. she eventually joined us as Lois Lane. <laughs> yep. But she I is. think she's she, online as well. I've seen oh, her she is on as well, well popping up. Yes. But you're, you're asking me what my favorite character is to do. And there's there's a new one in my stable that I'm kind of partial to, and that would be Marv oh, wow. from Sin City. Wow! Yeah. Oh, oh wow! Right. Yeah. That's cool. I, I I put the facial prosthetics on. I put the bandages all over my face. Wow! And I, I get to walk around with a bottle of Jack, a bottle of pills, and a cigarette in my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> all these parents are like, "Hey, kids, take a picture with this guy." I'm like, "Wait a minute! I'm not the role model you want to take a picture with." Wow. Yeah. yeah, you'd I be surprised. This photo was taken by the amazing Marianne Butler. Oh, in wow. Oh, wow. So that's oh, my God. Oh, my God. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. That is amazing. I would just say our feet hurt and we were tired, but we walked to Times Square from the Javits Center because you're only the Zod Squad in Times Square yeah. probably yeah. once. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 So it was the, the best part was we were standing up on that platform, remember, and Marianne and Mab was taking our photo, and then this guy walks up to us, and he was like, Yo, 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 like he's so excited and he rips open his shirt <laughs> and he was wearing a General Zod t-shirt. <laughs> oh, no. Only random. Completely yeah, random. Exactly. Yeah, completely. <laughs> That's so funny. One of the best uh, compliments I ever got as a cosplayer was from uh, Rutger Hauer's wife when I was oh, cosplaying uh, Roy. Roy Batty yeah. from uh, from Blade Runner. And th that was the weekend I met, I met the Rutger and we had a you know good time together. But uh, Mrs. Howard came to my table where I had all my my uh, my eight by ten photographs for sale, and I, I gave her one of myself as as Roy. And she's looking at the picture. And she goes, "Wow, you you look just like my husband, just better." But was I getting around? But he was a sad loss. Yeah, yeah, that was that that one hurt. He was another. Another yeah yeah another great group we do with Jared is and uh, Matt now and, and and Matt yeah that's right my God we're like a, we went from the threesome to a foursome this is great <laughs> yeah. Part, uh, um, yeah, Jared, and, and Faye are both yeah. big Indiana Jones fans uh, Jared Matt does an amazing uh, indie 
And well, yeah, I'll let well, you I have take to, it, I have take to find the one of the four of us. There's a good one of the four of us. But Tank plays, you know, in Raiders of the Last Ark, the, the German mechanic that gets his head ripped off yeah. by the propeller. And yeah. The, oh, yeah. Yeah. Tank yeah. plays Germanic <laughs> mechanic. I do. I do Marion Ravenwood in the white dress, in the, the Well of Souls dress. Yeah. Mab does Cairo Marion in the red pants. And Jared obviously does Indy. Um, but pull up that. But here's. So Tank and I obviously are are not a couple in the movie, but are a couple in real life. So we did a prom photo of what the, the a Nazi mechanic and Marion Ravenwood would look like going. <laughs> <laughs> that is awesome. Jared is such a good indie. Yeah. Jared is an amazing indie. Yeah, we have a lot of fun with that one. That one is a lot of fun. I bet. I bet. You, you me as Road Pig, right? You said I was like... I love to watch him as Road Pig. I don't know what it is. There's something <laughs> wrong with me. I don't know. When I first met Tank, he gave me his business card, and I looked him up on Facebook, and I was sitting, I, I didn't... Stalker. Stalker. <laughs> what? <laughs> 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 Maybe not. Anyway, I, I don't know. I looked up, and one of the first pictures I saw of him was Road Pig um, oh, from uh, G.I. Joe, and he was, like, biting into a can of soda and, like, making it squirt out and, like, a donut was hanging out of his mouth. And I was like, why am I into this? <laughs> I, wonder, I wonder where he's... Can I ask, Tank, how, how did you choose Lucius Malfoy? That seems a really strange choice, Look, thinking about the other characters you do. Um, I, I, I like... <laughs> the cool thing about playing Malfoy is that I get to be a pretentious prick all day and everybody freaking loves me for it. <laughs> oh, that's good enough reason. You know, it's not a reason at all, some will say. Um, no, I, I am a Harry Potter fan. I mean, I, I, I brought my kids up watching those movies along with the other classics like Star Wars, Lord of the Rings, all that good shit. Um, and I, I just, the character, he's so smooth. He's just so yeah. suave. Oh, yeah. And, you know, and it, it was, it's, I actually had somebody stop me at a Harry Potter event once and I, they, they got in front of me with their camera, so I stopped walking to pose, and they said, no, 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 I want to get footage of you walking as Because <laughs> I, 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 you know, it's, I, I, I where do I go with that? I don't know, he gets awful clumped when he talks about himself clumped. so much. Oh, yeah. 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 Oh, brilliant. Uh, <laughs> no, a friend of mine said to me once when uh, I was at Dragon Con, my, my buddy Terry, uh, I was doing Roy Batty for the first time, and I ran into him as I was waiting for some other people from my, my cosplay group to show up. And oh God, I got it. Uh, and, uh, I, we, were just, we were just chatting, and I, I was dressed as Roy, but I wasn't really thinking about being in character. But I saw him the next day, and he said, you know, I got to tell you something, man. Talking to you last night was, like, spooky, because you were channeling Roy Batty. You weren't. Oh, wow. Hey, you wow. were Roy Batty. And I was like, really? I wasn't even thinking. Yeah. One so, time we had a really, like... Very, very, very serious and important life conversation, but he was just as Roy Batty, and it was. Really <laughs> and I was like staring into his eyes, but they were like extra blue from the contacts, and he wasn't yeah. wearing a shirt, and there was blood down his face, and I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> that that that, that <laughs> had the nail in his through his hands. So Marianne Butler just texted me this, so there's the four of us. Oh, what a oh, yes. Oh yeah, my gosh. Oh, awesome. well done, is there, is, yeah. is there any characters photo, you haven't been yet that you'd like to? Yes. Can you give us a hint? Yes, there are. Uh, does anybody know who yes. martial law is? Yes, being, really? being a big 2000 AD wow. fan, etc. So. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I, I've actually got a bunch of stuff on eBay, like in my shopping cart for uh, their martial oh law. God. <laughs> Truth be told. I have the martial law hat, and I must have made that. Uh, it's over twenty years ago. Five years ago, that must have been my first foray into uh, like cosplay. Was making martial laws caps to let San Futuro PD let yeah. the punishment fit the crime. Uh, so that's one I've always wanted to do. Um, big aliens fan, so uh, Drake from uh, from Aliens, the uh, small gunner. Yeah. That goes without saying. Um, Warhammer 40,000 Space Marine. Why not? What, who doesn't want to be a Space Marine? Oh, my it sounds God, like yeah. a lot of work. It is yeah, a lot exactly. of work. Yeah. So, okay. so stick, stick. Yes, yes, yes. Because yes, yes. Of, um, of our competition thingy, first of the Thunderdome, do we know who the winner is? Uh, this is the um, Piggy versus Drago. 
Yeah, so we haven't okay, had the winner have, of that one, right. and never well, have I let's ever. Let's do this celebrity well. Thunderdome okay. first. So that was. Yeah. Who's the winner there? Mm. Celebrity Thunderdome <laughs> is <laughs> flushed by a bloody mile. What? No. Oh, about no. Sorry. <laughs> What are you Pretty drinking? What are you drinking? Uh, bloody Corona, so it's not alcoholic. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I've got I've got so, three bloody competitions going and a video. I mean, I can't the cope pig, with it. The pig. The pig. It's it's the pig. The pig gets it by two points, yes. mainly because bloody oh. Blackie. Yes. Hi. 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 So this piggy one. Oh. Oh. Oh, get, yeah. devastated! Devastated! <laughs> Sorry, it was yeah. Amorous. Um, although, 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 Mama Giddy said that um, Drago should have won, so I really yes. like, think that. Mark, 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 Mark. Mark. If you all well, she don't the make the rules here. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Scotty. <laughs> they have so uh, yeah. So Drago came second. So that's all good. All good. Yeah. <laughs> he, he, he was vice runner up. It was it was a good fight. <laughs> <laughs> you lost the game. Yeah, wait, 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 wait till that gets him on a big uh, sign at Wasteland Weekend. You know, lost against Miss he Piggy. lost against Piggy. <laughs> <laughs> so so uh, the great the great Lord Humongous no. on the uh, bunker or bin was it? Uh, did you go for the? Uh, let us just put that back on. Was it Donkey Brains? Uh, the toy, which is truly scary, or did you go for the flush and frenzy, the toilet themed? I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm very mature. You, 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 <laughs> so it was it was the plushy. plushy. In plushy. fact, we will actually hunt that down for you, sir, and we will get you a copy. <laughs> <laughs> you get plushy home. <laughs> well, you should do too because it's a complete walkover. Everybody wants that. That is going to be the. Well, two two people didn't, but I'm not going to name them. <laughs> but I read as well, Flushy can be used as a weapon, I think. Someone recommended that one as well. Weapon, a weaponized Flushy, yeah. Yeah. Uh, and, and we've got a lot going on about uh, Mr. Hanky, uh, the Christmas poo. Yeah, that yeah. reminded me a lot of Mr. Hanky. Yeah, so, 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 at least three people have now got the earworm of Mr. Hanky. I have yeah, a question awesome. about the Dogs there. of War, going back to Wasteland Weekend. So yes. in your Dogs of War party, right. are you missing any characters? There are uh, some sort of minor tertiary characters, if you will. There's the barber that is shaving the side of Wes, Wes's head when the uh, when the rig comes ripping through the tank. Uh, so we've talked about getting him. Uh, there's an iconic scene of a, of a guy, a mohawker, wearing uh, yeah. swimming goggles. Uh, we've been trying to work on, on him. Uh, so only the most diehard fans will actually see those characters and be like, I know who that is. Meanwhile, they'll talk about the problem you never thought you'd have. Yeah, here's here, yeah. This is a this is a good problem to have. There are a lot of ladies in the Dogs of War, and yet there's only like a handful of ladies in the movie. So we're having to uh, double up on some of these characters and stick them in as smegmas or berserkers here and there as we go. Uh, we actually uh, imperative De devious uh, is one of our. Uh, Golden Youth, so we have a gender bent uh, Golden Youth, and she she does a great job of that. Um, so yeah, there's. Uh, I, I never thought I'd have to say, you know, we have too many girls around here. <laughs> you can come in. I will come, ladies. I, 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 <laughs> I would say shout out to all the amazing women in definitely. our dog support tribe. Are, are you going to mm -hmm. are you going to join us on stage it. again at the next wasteland? Are you going to bring more of the dogs of war? Because I think last year we had about four of you. We had. We had yeah we had. Uh, had a few of us up there. I'll what, whatever you guys want. I'm always down for a good time. We it's always, always we always play guys. a little game with Jared Aww. of how many people can we put on the stage. <laughs> I know he, loves he loves that game. I don't think he likes. I think that we had much. about fifty this year. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Do you want the never let's have I ever results? Hold on, let's let's go. Yeah. Have you got them? Yeah. Let's go to tank. Oh, I have them, so tank yes. Which do you believe is the truth? Uh, was it? Did mechanise Chrome, Ronan from VMV Nation, or Dolph Lundstrandston? <laughs> First of all, I don't know who that second guy is. Before <laughs> Dolph, 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 Dolph Stream or something. Dolph, Dolph Lundgren. <laughs> this is just not happening. No, oh. I'm, I'm thinking she got 
got backstage at a BNB show or did something with this stuff. Somehow BNB's involved in this these, these shenanigans. Mm. That's got to be it. Okay, mechanized. What? What? what and what's the answer, Mech? It was Ronan. We played with him at VGT, and he was. Yeah. So we will share later on the video when we got him witness. But Dolph, we had him as well at one of our shows, and he actually had a, a picture taken with us. So we had a similar experience as you were. <laughs> wow. <laughs> so we played with him in Manchester. Yeah, so. The on the Eddie Comic Con. Right as well. did, did they? That's awesome. That's chap, awesome. Chap, 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 but I didn't, I didn't dare to, to do this because I didn't want to. <laughs> <laughs> he did get some dart flights, some fancy oh. V2A dart flights. Though. Yeah, he did, yes. actually. That's very it. Nice very exclusive. Flight. I'm missing my DB two way dark flights. I'm I'm a big. I'm dark... sure I gave you oh, yeah. some. We will I'm send you. Sure I gave you some. Does anyone have? We all, must all, have all not have a dark taken match. care of them. Oh, no. to me, they didn't make we, it. We will, we will definitely have to oh. send some over to. One of the. One of... Excellent. Yeah. I think we are just about to roll off. It has been an absolute pleasure. Is there any anybody you'd like to do a <laughs> shout out to? Oh, you know, I guess I'd be remiss if I didn't. Give a shout out to my boys Chip and and, uh, and Banana Craft Shoot and Thunder from uh, Discard to Reroll. Every day I drive an hour to work and then an hour back home. This is what I listen to in the car and laugh my ass off the whole way. Thank you guys. If Tank and I it. ever break up, it's because he left me for that guy. For Chip, yeah. <laughs> we'll just be the two of us. We would also like to give a shout out to our entire Wasteland family. Uh, we love you guys. We miss you guys. We support the decision. We think it's the right decision. But we miss you and we can't wait to see you whenever we see you. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> awesome, guys. Thank you so much. Thank you, everybody online. It's been a, it's been a great one. Thank the you. Lord Humongous, everybody. My <laughs> God. Thank you so much for both coming on. Thank you. Thank, Thank you for having us. And we will great. definitely get you back on uh, when we're going to do the big release of the Mad Max uh, Museum T-shirt with you in AD. And also, we get the Feral Kid on. Let, let, let's let's do it. Let's yes. get as many uh, Mad Max two people on one call as possible. It'll be great fun. Oh, that would be <laughs> historic. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you everybody, and we will see you all next week. Hope you've all had it. Stay safe, everyone. Bye, see Love you. you all.